For those of us essential oil users and enthusiasts, uh, we come across information every once in a while that mean that it has chemistry terms. And so it becomes useful to learn a little bit of chemistry. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And, and we talk about essential oils uh, and, and using them, but we, we, don't, we haven't discussed a whole lot of chemistry. So if you'll bear with me, I want to share with you maybe a 10 minute lesson in chemistry to start just, just to orient a little bit. When you hear information about certain things associated with essential oils, especially if it's coming from the science uh, side of things, uh, you're going to get chemistry terms and things and, and, and people kind of don't know, don't know what these mean. So uh, just a real brief uh, discussion here about some of the essential oil chemistry. Now, uh, there's a more detailed information and discourse in a three-hour uh, material that I have on a DVD set uh, that, is, uh, that you can purchase in the link below. So let's just go briefly, okay? Now, there's a paper that's recently come out talking about terpenes, monoterpenes, uh, the toxicity of monoterpenes. And so then people have been asking, uh, oh my gosh, w which oils have terpenes? So how do I avoid terpenes? Um, this just shows to me a, a level of, of in unfamiliarity with you know essential oils and essential oil chemistry uh, that, that I think we can maybe fill the gap a little bit here and, and kind of come up, up to speed a little bit. So let's talk about chemistry uh, essential oil chemistry. Now, the easiest way for me to think about essential oil chemistry is how does the plant make it, the, these different compounds, so these are all manufactured in the plant, so how does the, the plant make the chemistry, the chemical, and then that gives us actually the, you know, a hint at what, at what, how to, how to orient this. And so what it basically comes down to is we have two classes, two main classes of compounds of chemicals in plants or essential oils. They're terpenes, and phenylpropanoids. And these differ as a, as, a, as a class because of how they're made. Terpenes are manufactured from in the cell. We're talking about, not, we're not talking about chemical synthesis. We're talking about biosynthesis, okay? So when we look at the biosynthesis inside the cell, terpenes are made from isoprene, two isoprene units, uh, and they, it go th goes through a cascade, uh, geraniol pyrophosphate or uh, geraniol, okay? So it's it, two, Two uh, 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 isoprene get linked together. These are five carbon units. They form a 10 carbon structure. And the simplest uh, uh, terpene is, uh, is geraniol or geraniol. Okay, that's the alcohol version of it. Okay, so that's the terpene synthesis pathway. It goes through uh, isoprene and then it gets more and more complicated from there. Two isoprenes makes a terpene or monoterpene. I know that sounds weird because two should make dye, but two makes a monoterpene or also referred to just as a terpene. And then three isoprene units, when you add another one, uh, you, you get a sesquiterpene. If you add four, you get more and more. I mean, you can add more and more and the names get more and more complicated and you hear less and less of those names. So basically you'll hear uh, of, of, of terpenes and sesquiterpenes are the typical, or monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes are the typical phrases or terms you'll hear. And they are manufactured in the plant, made biosynthesized in the plant using these isoprenes. Now, isoprene is a five carbon you know, a structure. You can almost think of this, if you really wanna simplify it, that this is kinda of coming from the sugar pathway uh, in the cell. Now, if we switch over to the phenylpropanoids, uh, and so now, that's a whole different class of, of compounds because they're manufactured in the cell, in the plant cell, from the amino acid phenylalanine. So they're called phenylpropanoids because of that connection. They, they do have a phenolic ring in them, and you might have also heard these as phenolics, okay? And, uh, and so these tend to be a little sharper, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Within that, so that's that's the phenylpropanoid pathway, and you get cinnamaldehyde, and that's the primary the primary essential oil uh, uh, foundational unit in in the the phenylpropanoid pathways biosynthetic biosynthetic pathway is cinnamaldehyde, and then or, uh, and then from there it branches into all kinds of different things. A uh, common phenylpropanoid that you might have heard of, methyl salicylate in wintergreen oil. Another common phenylpropanoid that you might have heard of, a eugenol in, in clove oil. Okay, so these are the phenylpropanoids. Very, very different kinds of compounds, diff different biosynthetic pathways. So those are your two basic pathways, terpenes and phenylpropanoids. Okay. And now from there, it, you know, they branch out and they get diverse. You have thousands of different terpenes, 
thousands of different monoterpenes. So if you see a reference, a, a review article that talks about toxicity of five monoterpenes and generalizes it to all terpenes, that, that's just not, that's not supportable by the literature. That's not, that's not reasonable at all. Okay, so just looking at it from the standpoint of, and so common terpenes that you might know, terpene chemistry varies d dramatically. You have ring structures within terpene chemistry, like menthol is a ring structure. You've got alpha pinene and pinenes. Those are all, all kind of uh, looped ring structures. Uh, then you've got things like linalol that you find in lavender oil, uh, limonene, okay, limonene, menthol, uh, pinene. These are all terpenes, okay. They all have very different chemistry, very different action, uh, and and then th their tolerance in the body in the human body is going to vary dramatically. So we can't really make a generic statement about all terpenes having a certain kind of toxicity that's absurd the pharmacokinetics which is the the methods by which the body breaks these down going through the liver and going through the, the excretion pathways is, is very variable so it's just not a reasonable statement so let's let's get our, our our chemistry a little bit of knowledge on chemistry so we can make sense of these things okay now within that just to broaden our again broaden our a little bit of chemistry knowledge when you, you say, well, where do the alcohols and the ketones and the aldehydes, where do those come in? Either branch, the terpenes, sesquiterpenes, and the phenylpropanoids can be alcohols or aldehydes, you know, or, or, or ketones. And that's just, those are different uh, groups that are added to those later, okay? So those, those, the plant then goes and adds those later. I want to make a, a point or a comment here that we are talking about biosynthetic pathway and, and that those are genetically controlled. So in other words, those are controlled by genetics in the plant. The plant has to go through that same process. Each one of those is enzymatically uh, dictated. And so it's dictated by those enzymes, which means it's dictated by the genetics. So the peppermint plant will always make peppermint oil. It never makes a mistake. It never accidentally makes lavender oil. Uh, and the reason is because of its, of its genetics, which dictates the enzymes, which dictates the biosynthetic pathway. Okay, that is very, very different. This is, so in other words, the plant never makes a mistake. Uh, the, the, it's very different than the chemical synthesis of these compounds. When you look at, at linalol, for example, it goes through, it, they start out with methylheptanone, they manufacture methylheptanone uh, from, from formaldehyde and some other things. So. These are nasty processes that have a lot of, of um, contaminants, and these contaminants can be very, very dangerous. The plant, especially essential oil-based plants that we already are know, know and are familiar with, right? We, we're familiar with the, the essential oil-based plants. We don't use all uh, plants for, for essential oils. Not all plants have, have safe compounds. We wouldn't want to distill uh, a poison ivy and use that as an essential oil. Why? Because we, we know that that one's no good. We do want to look at basil. Why? Because we know it's good and we've used it for, for centuries or even thousands of years. So we've already kind of weeded out, weeded out the weeds, weeded out the ones that we don't like. We, you know, that one, no, that one you know, causes too many problems. And if you look in the literature, pennyroyal oil uh, and some of these other ones that we don't even sell, people don't use them anymore. They just, they just have, uh, some of the chemistry is a little too strong. Um, so, so that part is kind of, we don't worry about it so much and you know, we don't need to worry about it so much those the plants are, are making those compounds they never make a mistake when humans manufacture those chemically they contain a lot of contaminants and the ability to to uh, purify away those contaminants is a very expensive process it is, is rarely done and, and to any significant degree and especially when you're buying essential oils that are considered to be cosmetic they don't bother purifying those things. So the possibility of getting dangerous contaminants in a, in a, synth in a chemically synthesized essential oil blend or, or, even, or even one that uh, you know, sort of starts out with lavender oil and is spiked with linalol, in other words, they add more linalol in it. If it's synthetic linal linalol, it has the potential to have these contaminants that could be very dangerous. And I, and I mean very dangerous. My experience has been that we got a bad batch of lavender. We used to you know, use a, a, different, a variety of different oils, especially ones that were recommended by a medical doctor. In this case, it was recommended by a medical doctor. We were using their oils. Um, we we you know, went ahead with those because they promised us they were, they were you know, tested, et cetera, et cetera. We ended up with a bad batch of lavender. 
And several of us had some, some very, very strong reactions and, and it, it felt like it was attacking the pancreas, had rashes that formed in the middle of the abdomen, uh, had, had you know, very, very uh, symptoms associated with, with uh, pancreatic stress. And so uh, this, this bad batch of lavender wasn't just a, I mean, we weren't ingesting a whole lot of it. We are not talking about ingesting huge quantities. We were talking about very small amounts of this lavender oil we were ingesting as part of a therapy protocol. And, and that bad batch of, of lavender was very significantly dangerous to me. I mean, I, I was, we, there was no doubt in my mind that the, if we had continued with this, it would have done damage. So it's very, very important to make sure you do have real authentic essential oils that are manufactured by the plant, that are biosynthesized in the plant. The plant never makes a mistake. It always follows those pathways every single time. The, the chemical contaminants that come with synthesized, even if they claim to be pure, with synthesized compounds it is too not worth the risk. It is too risky. And so some people will say, well, okay, I'll buy the cheap stuff at the grocery store and I'll just diffuse it. No. No, don't diffuse it because when you diffuse it, you inhale it. When it, you inhale it, it absorbs into your bloodstream through the lungs. That goes straight to your brain, okay? And now that chemistry is, all, is in your system. Don't put it on topically because it absorbs into your bloodstream, goes straight to your brain. You'd be better off eating it. At least your liver would have a chance to detoxify it before it hits your brain. So no, don't use synthetic essential oils. That's why I just stick with Young Living, but you know that you're on my, on my site and you know how much I go with Young Living. I just don't mess with any other oil for this precise reason. If you would like to know more about this kind of chemistry and biosynthetic pathways and some of the information on the internet and how to navigate that, you can get that three hour DVD set. You can follow the link below, but I hope this has been helpful, this very brief lesson in chemistry. Terpenes, phenylpropanoids, sesquiterpenes, it's all good, it's all good.